I welcome Dr. Dilip and uh, for this uh, PG discussion course as an organizing chairperson. Thank you very much, madam. It's a pleasure to be thank here. You, thank, you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Hello, Dr. Jesse. Uh, hello, I sir. I did not Good welcome Jessie because she is our associate professor. <laughs> okay. Dr. Saumi and Lavanya, can you share your PPT, please? Yes, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, we are unable to switch on our video, video ma'am. Ma it's, it's visible now. Ma'am, are you able to see the video, ma'am? We can see. Okay, 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 sir. okay sir. Yeah, you can make it full screen and uh, you can start. Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, we can't see your video, only we can see your presentation slides actually. Uh, yes, yes. ma'am. We can uh, we cannot able to switch on the camera, ma'am. We are searching. Yeah. Uh, Somnia and Lavanya, we are able to see your slides. So if you're not able to switch on your video, it's okay. You can start the presentation. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are going, uh, Mrs. S, 28 years old, a homemaker from Kadlur. Uh, belonging to socioeconomic class 2, uh, booked at Kadlu GH, Primary Gravida at 20 weeks plus 6 days with the LMP of 39-2021 uh, with EDD of uh, July 7, 2022. Uh, she, chief complaint, she came with the complaints of breathlessness on exertion for past one month, increase for past one week. Also gives history of palpitation for past one week. History of presenting illness, uh, patient was apparently normal one month back, after which she developed complaints of breathlessness, which was insidious in onset, gradually progressive in nature. Initially, she had breathlessness on climbing stairs and on excessive work. Now, for the past one week, she has complaints of breathlessness while walking 10 to 15 feet distance on ground level, which relieves on rest. Breathlessness is associated with palpitation or exertion for the past one week, which had an insidious onset, gradually progressive and relieves at rest. There was no history of similar episodes in the past, no history of orthopnea or paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, no history of undue fatigue, syncope, chest pain, hemoptysis or swelling of lower limbs, no history of epigastric pain, vomiting, headache, blurring of vision and decreased urine output, no history of cough, but, uh, she was perceiving fetal movements well and no complaints of abdominal pain, bleeding or leaking per vagina. History of present pregnancy. First trimester, she had spontaneous conception confirmed by UPT at 40 days of amenorrhea. Dating scan done and dates were corresponding. Holic acid taken regularly till 14 weeks of gestation. NT scan done and told to be normal. First trimester screening not done. No history of fever with rash, cough, excessive vomiting, urinary tract infection, spotting or bleeding PV. No history of radiation or drug exposure. In second trimester, the quickening was felt. At fourth month of amenorrhea, she had immunized with the tier, two doses of PT injection. Iron and calcium tablets were taken regularly. Anomaly scan done and told to be normal with no anomalies. No history of raised blood pressure and OGTT was not done. No history of urinary tract infection. No history of bleeding per vagina. Now she came with a complaint of breathlessness assured with palpitation for past one week. Menstrual history, attained menarche at 13 years. Regular menstrual cycles with normal flow. Uh, 3 to 4 by 30 day cycle, no history of dysmenorrhea with LMP of 30 September 2021. Marital history, she had married for one year, non consanguineous marriage. Past medical history, there is no history of recurrent episodes of fever associated with joint pain, sore throat in the childhood, not a known case of diabetes mellitus, hypertension, tuberculosis, bronchial asthma, seizure disorders, thyroid disorders, or cardiovascular disease. No history of blood transmission in the past and there is no surgeries in the past. 
family history, uh, history of diabetes in mother, no family history of uh, heart disease in first or second degree relatives. Personal history, a mixed diet, she had normal sleep and appetite with normal bowel and bladder habit. Summary, Mrs. S, 28 year old, primary gravida at 20 weeks plus six days of gestation with complaints of breathlessness for past one month, aggravated over past one week, which is Nayaka class three uh, with palpitation for further evaluation. So, so should we move to examination? You know, history, you want to add anything, Dr. Jesse? Uh, no, sir. Okay. See, this NYH classification itself is an abbreviation. Okay, New York Heart Association. Heart Association. So you don't make abbreviation and sub-abbreviation like Neha. Fine? Okay, sir. And uh, vaccination, what is given in your hospital? Uh, tetanus talks. We normally we give TD, sir. So why she has got TT? It uh, uh, she was booked in Kadluji, sir. Okay. They, Bola, uh, Tamil Nadu government is giving TD only. So please verify that history. Okay. Yeah. I mean these may be small points, but uh, yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, right. And uh, when the pregnancy is so early, like eighteen weeks, twenty weeks, we don't usually tell the user term leaking and all. Okay, okay sir. sir. Yeah. And uh, when you used her, she's booked. Yes, sir. What does it mean, actually? What, what is booking? And I mean, lack of time, I will not get into detail, but these terms are used mostly near the delivery time. How has been her antenatal care? How many visits here? Yes, See, any patient comes for the first time will be unbooked only, right? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Such early in pregnancy, these terms. Okay. Otherwise, uh, you have uh, pointed out well, she has a progressive breathlessness and uh, palpitation on exertion. And and why it's your class? Uh, what, what is the class you're told? Class three, class three, sir. Class three. So, can you tell me what is NYHA class, different classes? Uh, and what is it based class. on? Uh, this is based on the functional status of the card, uh, heart patients, uh, cardiac functional status, sir. It has four classes. Class one is uh, there is no limitation on the physical activity. Uh, class two is there is a slight limitation of the physical activity. And the ordinary activity will cause the symptoms like undue fatigue, palpitation, and uh, dyspnea, sir. In class three, there is marked limitation of the physical activity and the less than ordinary activity will cause the symptoms. Uh, class 4, there is symptoms in test. Very good. So it is a disability classification rightly told and uh, what activity is permitted by the her condition. So yes, very, sir. very well summarized. There is no limitation of activity. Uh, essentially, they behave like a normal patient and these patients are very low risk. Class yes, 2, you told with some activity, yes, bit exertion, and uh, there is a marked restriction of activity in class three and no activity may be possible in class four. Yes, and uh, symptom you rightly told for benefit, I'll just repeat. Yes, uh, it is common symptom is breathlessness, but yes, palpitation, anginal pain, even and excessive fatigability, all this yes. also are part of the symptom, which is commonly missed in the histories. Yes, sir. Right. Fine. You can continue with examination. Okay, sir. A general examination. Patient is comfortable at rest, moderately built and nourished, height of 164 centimeters, pre-pregnancy weight of 62 kgs, present weight being 66 kgs, so BMI of 23.1 kg per meter square. Patient had no pallor, ectris, sinusis, clubbing, fetal edema, generalized lymphadenopathy. Breast and thyroid appeared normal, spine and gait were normal. So here, one thing you can notice that... Uh, it may not be long-standing heart disease, right? Yes, yes sir. The well-bit lady, 164 is a very good height, good weight, pre-pregnancy, right? And symptoms are last for a, a month, which is aggravated or for last one week. So very unlikely to be a long-standing heart disease. Yes, Fine, yes. Please continue. Vitals, temperature 98.6 Fahrenheit, pulse rate is 90 per minute, regular in rhythm and normal volume, no radio radial or radio femoral delay, all peripheral pulses were felt, no pulse deficit, BP is 110 by 80 millimeters of mercury, measured in the right upper limb in sitting position, respiratory rate was 16 per minute and JVP is not elevated. 
systemic examination cardiovascular uh, just just a, just a couple of things so uh, pedal lady ma you need to come in here okay sir okay no. yes sir there was yeah. no pedal lady yeah sir. and also general examination when you finish before yes, vital sir. examination breast and thyroid need to be commented yeah. yes sir you are coming later we have commented in the first later fine fine maybe i missed it continue and uh, also temperature unless there is a history of fever if you present it is a febrile that's enough okay sir so. in a routine case we don't clinically take a thermometer and measure the temperature yes sir fine uh, systemic examination cardiovascular system inspection the chest appears symmetrical chest wall moves equally with respiration no visible pulsations noted no obvious chest deformity no scars or, or dilated veins seen apical impulse not visualized Palpation. All inspective findings were confirmed. The apical impulse was felt at the left fourth intercostal space, one centimeter lateral to the midlateral line. No palpable. Do you expect this normal? Yes, sir. See, normally, where is the apex? In the pregnancy, it is in the left fourth. No, but she was pregnant. How many weeks? Twenty plus six weeks. So, oh, so the signs will not be there. Yes. No, just keep this small small points in mind. So if okay. you're pre presenting me a twin pregnancy or a distended abdomen or a term pregnancy, I can understand this finding. Yes. Otherwise, your apex position is going to be normal. It is not going to be in fourth intercostal space laterally displaced. Okay. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> just because she's pregnant, but see, she can be eight weeks pregnant. So findings will be different. Here's our twenty weeks. I don't expect these changes to be happening, but there may be another cause also. Fine. Okay, so. Uh, no so finding has to be very clear, and okay. these are the small points you get into trouble. Standard format when you present, no? Yes. Please, please continue. Uh, no palpable thrill or parasternal heave noted. Auscultation: S1, S2 heard, S1 loud. In the mitral area, rough rumbling, low pitched, greatly mid diastolic murmur, best heard in the left lateral position, with breath held at expiration and not radiating. The other areas uh, were normal. Right. Respiratory system examination. Normal vesicular breath sounds were heard. Bilateral air entry was present. No added sounds. Central nervous system examination. No focal neurologic deficit present. Obstetric examination. On inspection, all quadrants move equally with respiration. Umbilicus in the midline. No scar sinuses or dilated veins. Hernial orifices appear free. Palpation. Uterus corresponds to twenty weeks. Relax. No ascites. No hepatosplenia megaly. Diagnosis: A 28-year-old primary gravida at 20 weeks and six days of gestation with heart disease complicating pregnancy, probably mitral stenosis. I have NYHA class three, probably of rheumatic origin, not in failure. Right. So, of course, you have got. Uh... based on history some findings suggestive of uh, progressive dyspnea and palpitation yes sir and uh, examination finding we are getting some murmur mm -hmm. yes, yes sir murmur we are getting fine so normally you will require a, clinically we can suspect and will require echo to confirm our finding fine, yes. uh, cardiologist code now can you tell me like uh, of course is very early pregnancy a lot of time patients in pregnancy will have lot of non specific symptoms all right yes, yes sir so for example breathlessness is little bit common why breathlessness can be there in early pregnancy uh, the uh, progesterone uh, effect sir because there is progesterone there will be decreased uh, uh, there will be a decreased sensitivity to uh, carbon dioxide sir so resetting of chemo receptor for a lower yes, threshold for co2 fine co2 so yes sir Fine. So there is a little little air hunger is common, fine. Yes, sir. And cardiac output increases. So some amount of uh, uh, breathlessness may be felt. I mean, sensation of the breathing. Now, what symptoms you get, which on history you will think that this may be significant cardiac uh, uh, sir, illness uh, may be there. Yes, sir. The dyspnea is progressive, sir. sir. Orthopnea, PND, nocturnal cough. uh uh feed like you know not subsiding on rest uh any anginal pain 
that patient presents with uh, hemoptysis uh, palpitation even at rest uh, oliguria sir um, why oliguria in uh, right heart failure they may present with uh, decreased urine output sir I mean, oligure is not a classical symptom described. What you told right is progressive dyspnea. Progressive, yes. And uh, patient, of course, if it is physiological, it will not be progressive. progressive. The same amount of breathlessness persists. And uh, on exertion, there is an increase in dyspnea. And uh, of course, lying down, she may become more uncomfortable. Yes. Sir. What you already pulled. And uh, of course, hemoptysis, anginal pain, syncopal attack, etc. What are the signs you can get uh, which makes you think that she, she may be having a cardiac disease? Of course, murmur is the uh, most uh, classical finding we are getting. Yes, sir. Tachycardia will be there. Shift of the apical beat, uh, apical impulse can be seen. Um, so, this uh, some can... amount of tachycardia may be normal to pregnancy. Normal of course, pregnancy. it's not be very high, but yeah, some amount of pulse rate increases. And later pregnancy shift of apical beat can be there, okay. of course, and lateral. So, and, what uh, are the signs you will see in general examination or cardiac examination? Sinosis, uh, sinosis uh, clubbing can be yes. seen, sir. So very important. Any sinosis should not be ignored. Yes, clubbing sir. is suggestive of again some chronic illness. Yes. yes then what else? Uh, then uh, we can see a uh, uh, bilateral bi uh, vessel or crepit uh, rails or crepitation, sir. On RS, and that is a sign of failure. Okay, failure. what else? And hepatomegaly, sir. Ascites may be there, sir. Right heart failure. Elevated yeah. JVP can be seen, sir. Yes, very important. General examination, elevated JVP. <laughs> what else? Polycythemia may be there, sir. And cyanotic heart disease. Cyanotic heart disease. Yeah, polycythemia will be there, but difficult to pick up on clinical examination. Patient may appear like non anemic Yes. What else? What about systolic murmur? If you get a systolic murmur, what about the grade of the murmur? Uh, yes. More than grade three, uh, systolic yeah. murmur will be abnormal, ma'am. Uh, yes. What are the need... systolic murmurs that you get in a normal patient? Yes, I yes. smell injection systolic murmurs, ma'am. Where is it hurt? In uh, mitral. So there are flow the... murmurs, no? So where which areas you will get? Uh, four four areas: uh, aortic, pulmonary, tricuspid, and my so commonly situation. commonly flow murmurs you will get most commonly in the pulmonary and pulmonary. aortic areas, yes. right? Yes, to yes, be sir. more prominent if the patient is already anemic. Oh, yes, sir. So more more amount of uh, blood volume goes in, then you can get murmurs there. Fine, but if it is very loud, say more than three. Or yes, any sir. murmur with thrill present. Yes. Sir. Okay. What about other types of murmur which may be significant even if they are faintly heard? Diastolic murmurs. So uh, any diastolic murmur may be. Murmur is less, uh, significant, sir. So that will be, yeah. Or persistent uh, splitting of S2 or presence of S4. S4. So S4. all this will suggest you that there is a some underlying cardiac illness. Right. You want to add anything, Dr. Jesse? Oh, no, sir. Okay. So, <clears throat> pregnancy, what are the common physiological changes with okay. relation to cardiac disease? Sir, uh, cardiac output will increase by 50%, sir. The uh, plasma volume will increase by... Uh, uh, the RBC uh, volume, the blood volume will increase by uh, 50%, sir. The plasma volume will increase by 30%, uh, sir. The uh, um, stroke volume will... Uh, uh, systemic vascular resistance will decrease by 20%, sir. The, um, uh, so the um, blood volume will increase by 40%, plasma volume will increase by 40 to 43%, uh, RBC will increase by 30%, stroke volume will increase by 30%, and heart rate will increase by 15 beats per minute. So cardiac output will increase by 50%. There will be decrease in the peripheral vascular resistance. So there will be decrease in the blood pressure, so mean arterial pressure or diastolic blood pressure in the mid trimester by 10 to 15 mm of HG, sir. Yes. Uh, can I just summarize? So, if a non anemic patient, of course, anemic patient, the cardiac output uh, rise will be more, but in a healthy patient, cardiac output may increase about 40%. These numbers, of course, vary. 
I right? See. And I the, see. mainly it is because of what change in the heart? Stroke volume. Stroke oh, yes, volume. Stroke volume. And to some extent by the heart rate. Heart rate. Aided by decreasing peripheral vascular resistance. Right? Because the heart has to pump against lower resistance, so it can pump better. Fine. So these are the some of the changes happen. Blood volume, you told, yes, 40-50% increase may be there. RBC volume in a non-anemic patient may increase by 20 anemic 20%. Can go higher. Right? So roughly about 40 to 50 percent blood volume and 20 percent this thing. So what are the common heart diseases we see? Uh, rheumatic heart disease. disease in that uh, mitral valve is most commonly involves us. So mitral stenosis, aortic stenosis, um, mitral regurgitation and uh, aortic uh, tricuspid regurgitation. In uh, congenital heart disease, uh, ASD is the most common, sir. Um, no, is there any change in trend now? See, earlier if you see 10 years back or 20 years back, almost 8 out of 10 were heart disease were rheumatic in origin. What is happening yes. right now? Now the congenital heart disease is more so because the treatment of uh, congenital heart disease is uh, being improved, so control of congenital heart disease. So, so currently like in our own statistics, we see almost equal number of rheumatic heart disease yes, and yeah. congenital heart disease. So we should know about that also. And you rightly see mitral wall is the most common affected wall followed by aortic wall. Right? Yes. Fine. And pulmonary wall, of course, hardly ever gets involved. Tricuspid may not be of much significance. Okay. Right. So, what are the different uh, changes happen in pregnancy which can cause failure? Say, so somebody was, uh, say, this, this lady before pregnancy, she was like asymptomatic practically. Uh, of course, this pregnancy is only 20 weeks, but I can take it like what are the changes happen during pregnancy, different timing where she can go in failure. Yes, and sir. There are five critical periods during pregnancy, sir. Uh, one is uh, 12 to 16 weeks where all the hemodynamical changes, that, uh, cardiovascular changes takes place to start, sir. Then it is 28 to 32 weeks where it all just the a correction, just a small correction that uh, hemodynamic changes starts much earlier. Earlier, okay, sir. So it may be as early as eight weeks. Eight weeks, okay. okay. The important thing is first trimester itself, she can go for failure. Failure. Uh, the cardiac output what increases almost half of them, half of, half of it happens in the first trimester. First trimester. Fine, please continue. And the second one is 28 to 32 weeks, so where every uh, hemodynamic changes will peak in the, so during the So blood volume is maximum that time and yes. uh, adaptations are maximum. Fine. And then during labor, sir. During labor, cardiac output will increase sir, uh, more. Why? And then uh, there are three. In the first stage, uh, it is due to, there are 50 percent, uh, 20, 15 percent uh, increase in cardiac output, sir. Because of the contraction of the uterus, there is 300 to 500 ml of blood from the uterus will enter the systemic circulation, sir. And the second, uh, in second stage, uh, pain and anxiety, there will be sympathetic stimulation, so there can be increase in the cardiac output. In the third stage, uh, after the delivery of the fee, uh, baby, the uterine will uh, retract, sir. So one uh, more, like 1,000 ml of blood will enter the systemic circulation and from the extravascular space. So. I mean, you answered correctly, but the numbers are not correct. Okay. Uh, 15 percent yeah, yeah. I, I mean of course these 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 will vary from patient to patient so yes. the average figures uh, what we say is in the first stage of labor also pain and anxiety is there so there is increase in cardiac demand of course okay. maximum this we are in the second stage and uh, immediately after delivery again auto transmission happens fine yes. what happened immediate postpartum immediate postpartum uh, there will be uterine retraction sir and we told uh, about the auto transmission. What else? Extracellular fluid will suddenly move. There will be redistribution of the extracellular fluid. Sir, that takes time. That happens over the next few hours to few days. Okay, it's not immediate postpartum. So immediate and, postpartum uh, is just the size uh, of the uterus. to the uterus yes, comes uh, Compression of the IVC will be uh, uh, released, released, sir. Released, so sir. increased venous return will be there. That IVC time. compression is released. Normal released. uterine flow was about 650 ml per minute. That stops. 
uterus is contracted or it push up another 300 ml in so there are many various changes so so important thing is a lot of hemodynamic changes happen in labor yes sir in first like uh, labor, in first stage wow. yes uh, you should remember that uh, there are two reasons one is because of the increase in the heart rate and second is because of each uterine contractions that is okay. being come so that happens even in first stage itself so the increase in heart rate is due to the anxiety fear pain so that two factors are there which will increase the cardiac output in first trial first stage itself and this increase is due to the heart rate and due to the pumping of the blood with each uterine contraction and these two effects are highlighted or accentuated in second stage so that is that is the two separate reasons so that is the reason why Uh, you should make sure she gets adequate analgesia so that her heart rate doesn't increase out of control and uh, precipitate a cardiac peak. so that is the importance of how epidural is uh, can be given to the patient or you can give her if she is in cardiac failure prevents pethidine can be given so, okay okay so what are the i mean besides the no dynamic changes in the pregnancy different uh, part of the pregnancy what are the other causes of failure why the pregnant lady is more prone for cardiac failure and uh, means, any, of course your hemodynamic changes blood volume increase cardiac output increase that we have covered in detail uh, any precipitating any precipitating factors uh, anemia uh, infections uh, like uh, asymptomatic Bacteria, upper respiratory tract infection, any dental infections can precipitate the. Very good. What else? So, so in I mean, I can just summarize that any infections can cause, right? Yes, common yes, one, common most common one is the respiratory infection, UTI, etc. Can cause yes. respiratory infection will be the most important. Of Then course, hyperthyroidism, uh, thyroid toxicosis associated. What else? Yes. Hypertension, sir. very good so you know in primary gravid i about 5 to 10% of them they'll have hypertension so yes. already there is a strain on the heart and the blood pressure goes up then heart has to pump again uh, oh, higher yes. pressure so hypertension what else anemia again very common in our part no as yes, a anemia so, as the pregnancy progresses anemia may worsen and uh, pregnancy uh, anemia and hypertension these two are common contributing factor for failure what else infection anemia hypertension beside normal changes of pregnancy what else uh, in our setup diabetes sir what just diabetes sir the diabetes will not cause in our setup means rural setup what what is the problem means it will not be given in the book but that's what commonly we see two important thing is that see heart disease patient we always stay take adequate rest take adequate rest our women when they are at home ah uh, yes sir Ex inability to restrict activity yes sir we treat the patient well in the hospital everything stabilized go home after one week they again come in failure same medication started okay. okay okay sir second thing is compliance with the drug they miss a few <laughs> doses of drug then they can oh, go ah, yes. so in our set of inability to restrict activity not taking drugs uh, okay. uh, regularly besides anemia hypertension and infections okay so of course yes, pregnancy sir. changes blood volume and cardiac output changes oh. are again cause of uh, different timing of failure okay sir yes. fine so how do you manage in antenatal period so suppose she has come to 20 weeks to you Uh, what all yes. you will do for her she was seeing Sorry. the patient for the first time subsequent advice is what it should so we should assess the functional status of the uh, patient sir and uh, we should categorize her based on the risk uh, categorization sir depending so, on uh, that just just one second so here she is class 3 you told yes sir so what will you do when she is class 3 we will admit, admit the patient, the patient sir, sir. and uh, okay so this class 3 class 4 any time they need to admit that the patients class 1 class 2 of course if there are some nearby places they can come at term only or in labor also is all right if, 
if the whole antenatal period has been well far off patients you may admit class 2 patient also are here fine right? yes, otherwise class 1 patient we can admit in labor so so you will admit the patient what are you doing yes sir you have heard a history wise some significant finding were there in examination you got a murmur mm -hmm. right yes uh, we will ask for a cardiology opinion sir and uh, we'll have to uh, uh, do an echo sir baseline investigations and uh, echocardiogram sir in baseline investigations we'll be doing uh, complete hemogram sir where uh, we'll be doing uh, total count and differential count to look for infections hemoglobin to look for anemia um, then urine analysis sir then right. uh, we are in a right track so to save the time whatever you are doing in normal pregnancy we'll continue to do yes sir right? Yes, sir. You are ruling for uh, uh, various blood investigations, serological investigations, right? Yes, sir. And also, you look for echo. Echo cardiogram, sir. Fine. Yes, sir. Okay. Then subsequent advice. Uh, rest. rest, sir. We'll advise uh, adequate rest, sir. Um, at least uh, ten hours at night she should sleep, and two hours in the afternoon she should sleep. She should restrict her salt intake, sir, to less than. Two grams per day. Uh, adequate uh, hydration uh, should be maintained, sir. Um, uh, we should monitor her closely, sir. We should monitor her pulse rate, BP, her respiratory rate, and saturate oxygen saturation. Uh, then uh, cardiac status should be uh, maintained. Uh, as she is twenty plus six weeks, so we can now uh, uh, do an ultrasound for the fetal uh, state, fetal status. Yes. Well, whatever the routine, yes. routine what we do. See all those in addition. Yes. You have told. And so now her failure has improved. She has become class two. What yes, do you sir. do? We can discharge the patient, sir. Once uh, patient's uh, NYHS status has reduced, and uh, we should advise the patient on discharge that she should continue to maintain uh, rest and take all the medicines uh, appropriately, sir. And salt restriction. Patient should and, be advised. Uh, regular follow up and uh, each trimester you need to review with cardiologist. Cardiologist. Yes, Remember yes. that if any patient has any time class three or class four symptoms, she is at a high risk throughout the pregnancy. For logistical yes. reason, we may send her home and call her. But, yes. Uh, they can deteriorate any time. Okay. Yes, yes, yeah. Coming from this, what are the high risk factors which predict cardiac complication? What are the cardiac complication common? Say, for example, pulmonary edema. Arrhythmia. Uh, yes, so, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so these are the common cardiac events which can happen, including cardiac arrest. So what yes. are the factors which predicts the this patient is at high risk for cardiac events? Uh, somebody with a NYHS grade of uh, three or four, sir. Those yes. with obstructive uh, valvular lesions that we can see with mitral valve of uh, less than 2 cm square or aortic less than 1.5 cm square or um, injection uh, uh, fraction of less than 40%, sir. And uh, those who are having um, prior cardiac events, sir, that is trans, uh, any uh, prior MI or uh, uh, any uh, stroke or uh, transient ischemic attacks and anything, sir. Or and, simply uh, you can say failure itself. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, so yes. she, she became a class 3 in past also. So these are some of the factors where the patient now comes well controlled. She looks healthy otherwise, but still she is at a high risk. Right? Yes, sir. So the so patient yes, has to be counseled regarding them. Fine? Yes, sir. Okay. So you managed uh, each trimester well. She may be, because most probably her diagnosis will be mitral stenosis. She may be put on diuretics and drugs to control the heart rate. Heart rate. Okay. So you managed well. Third trimester came. What will you do? Uh, if she is uh, class one or class two uh, NYHA, sir, we should admit the patient two weeks prior to the expected uh, date of delivery, sir. Um, and uh, uh, we will wait for the spontaneous onset sir. of labor, sir. Uh, then why you want to admit class one, and class two? Uh, See, to... Class one is difficult to admit only because the logistical because and your the model will be class two yes i can understand sometimes we may admit okay because if she's from far off and all if you're not going to admit and do nothing why you want to admit? class three class four for treatment purpose yes, so yes. class one can come in labor okay. unless there is new cardiac uh, symptoms okay, or developed it can be admitted in labor itself 
class two, yes, near somewhere near the EDD, or you want to do intervention, that time you can admit. Logistic reason, many times we admit. Yes, practically yes. Yes. Okay. So class three, class four will be anyway with you. Okay. Yes. So, so let us put it simplified. Class two patient admitted at thirty eight weeks. Okay, sir. So we should wait for spontaneous onset of labor, sir. Um. Uh. Bed no, uh, uh, management remains the same. Yes, if you have induced for an obstetric reason, you will induce or yes, you wait. Right? Yes, yes, sir. Suppose same patient has developed oligoid Okay? Oh, yes, sir. Then we will and induce. You may have to induce, like a four. Yes. How will you induce a cardiac patient? Uh, sir, uh, or concentrated oxytocin. Uh, also, important thing is most of our cardiac disease patients, they have fortunately average size. Preterm labor, sir. So? Okay. Even ah, if yes. they have term average size babies, okay. babies are usually not well grown unless their diabetes is uh, also there. Some amount of FGR are not again very common if the okay. cardiac condition is well controlled. Certain cardiac illnesses, yes, can cause FGRs, but most of the rheumatic patient and throughout pregnancy is okay. So it will be average size baby, not big babies, and uh, usually they don't go post term also. Yes, so. Pre but suppose you have an indication to induce, how do you do that? Yes. Concentrated oxytocin uh, can be used, sir. Um, in the primary gravida, concentrated oxytocin, how long you will start? It will also cause fluid retention. Uh, sir, uh, prostaglandin uh, gel. Can be see, used. whenever a question for all yes. the rest of this year, what will you do? Your answer will be we will assess the baby size, we will assess the maternal the pelvis, pelvis, and pelvis and vision center. score. Yes, sir. This is a standard answer for all the uh, wherever the induction is required. No? Okay. You have to see the size of the baby, condition of the baby. You have to do a pelvic examination to see the adequacy of pelvis. And also you, you see the how is the cervix. That is based on the Bishop score. Okay. Right? So that is the standard answer. Be a hypertension case, diabetes case, whatever. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. What will you do? I will see the baby pelvis size, and baby condition, sex. pelvis assessment and Bishop score. Yes. So unfavorable cervix. What will we do? Uh, we will do Foley catheter uh, can be uh, used for conduction. So un under strict aseptic precaution. Very unfavorable cervix. We better respond with a mechanical method. One of the examples yes, will be police. Police. Okay. Yes. Anything else? Um, Prostaglandin E2 gel may be used, sir. Yes, most of the cardiac illness patient will tolerate and we can give prostaglandin E2 gel. Right? So these two yes. will be the common methods. Besides that uh, method like sweeping can be done, but of course, you are, every time you have to take the asepsis very uh, carefully. Fine. So you induce, then patient goes in labor. How do you manage her in labor? Uh, we will keep her in propped up position, uh, sir, and uh, we will ask her to be in uh, later deck, uh, rec position, okay, lateral position, and then uh, oxygen can be kept. Why lateral position? So it is semi recumbent and slight lateral tilt. Yes, sir. One side uh, pillow can be put on. Uh, on uh, so semi recumbent. Yes, sir. Why you want semi recumbent position, sir? Why you want semi recumbent position? Why she cannot be lying down to one side? Uh, there will be uh, cardiac output. primary congestion. Congestion. Fine. Because uh, if you say IVC, best is lateral tilt, not not even propped up. No. Yes, sir. So you want a pulmonary edema risk to be minimum. So semi recumbent position you keep in labor room. Fine. What else you do? And we should monitor the patients. So all our vitals. Uh, car, uh, fetal monitoring should be done, continuous fetal monitoring, and then uh, hydra, uh, fluid overload should be avoided, sir. Uh, what do you mean by fluid overload to be avoided? Uh, IV fluid should be maintained at uh, 75 ml per if hour. If there sir. is a need yeah. for IV fluid, then it will be given in 75 ml okay. per hour, sir. So patient can take the fluid what orally. Orally. Yes, we want We won't restrict the fluid, but we don't give anything IV unless there is IV. a specific yes, indication. indication. Fine. Um, then uh, we will minimize the PV, sir. Uh, number of PVs we. So, how will you monitor the progress of labor? Uh, by uh, pathogram will be done. And 
um, to know the descent of the head, we will do per abdominal yes. examination. So abdominally, you can make out how much head is above how and then how much is going in. You minimize the PV unless uh, needed. So usually normal pregnancy, we may do PV at two hourly. Here it may be delayed for oh, four yes. hours. Totally. Contractions are not adequate. You can delay it to six hours. And every time you do for the aseptic precautions. Okay. Now a partogram, you are doing it. Labor is progressing well. Okay. Yes, sir. In labor, what are the precautions other than this, what you have told? Antibiotics. when you are to take. Uh, Is like uh, any other patient? What extra things you have to do here? Uh, uh, you have connected the monitor, you are monitoring your pulse. Saturation of the blood pressure, oxygen. all this you are doing. What else? Sometime back. Uh, uh, input output monitoring, sir. Why? Input is taking orally. Why will you measure the urine every time? Unless there is the indication. No, there is no need to chart it. Antibiotic prophylaxis. Sir. Okay, so two important considerations. Antibiotic is one of them. What else? One more? Uh, anticoagulants. If there is any, she is taking any anticoagulants, we can stop. No, no, just sometime back we discussed that. Madam was telling, no? Pain is there, anxiety is there, tachycardia. Adequate pain relief, sir. What? Adequate, Adequate pain, pain relief, sir. Epidural Adequate pain relief should be there. Very good. Yes, yes, Adequate sir. pain relief. And, and uh, one more thing, you should auscultate her chest. Yes, because she you. may go into pulmonary and first stage. So that you didn't mention. So okay. Auscultation of the uh, respiratory system to see for any crepitations. Repetition. Normal patient, we check pulse rate, blood pressure, fetal heart. Right? In addition, yes. this patient will require periodic auscultation of the. Text auscultation, adequate yes. injury. And saturation, you can also monitor. So, analgesia, how will you provide? Epidural analgesia is uh, deferred, uh, sir. In cases of uh, aortic stenosis, we may go for uh, uh, epidural narcotics, sir, like pethidine, morphine. Mm -hmm. Aortic stenosis is not a very common uh, thing. We still yes. get most common lesion as mitral stenosis. Yes. So in those cases, what do you do? Um, we can give morphine, sir. Morphine. See, if facility is available, epidural is the first choice. First of choice. course, it needs an experienced uh, anesthetist also. See, normal label analgesia, anybody can give. Yes, sir. Uh, but uh, somebody who is going for a cardiac disease should be well versed with the uh, technique and the drug dosage. Fine? Okay. Yes, sir. So, for example, you rightly told if there is a fixed output lesions like aortic stenosis or permanently arterial hypertension. In this, any hypotension can be dangerous. So, we don't give a blockade. We may give a narcotics. Correct. But other patients, we can. Fine? So, yes, epidural sir. analgesia will be analgesia of choice. And then drug level has to be titrated with the pain relief. Right. What else? In the center where epidural is not possible, then what will you do? I intravenous uh, analgesia. Like what? Pethidin or morphine, sir. Which one you will prefer? Pethidin. Why? Of course, there will be also question of availability. Morphine is more strongly controlled. Most, but yes. the drug of choice will be morphine. Morphine. Okay? Okay. So yes. can also shoot up pressure a little bit. Morphine, what are the advantages? Um... With morphine availability, mind you, that it may not be available everywhere. So that can be so no choice and you may give with it in fine. Yeah. Okay, sir. So morphine, what are the advantages? Why I'm telling morphine I'll prefer. Epidural, yes, first choice. Next is morphine. Why morphine? Better so good tolerated. Relief. It relieves the pain, anxiety, etc. What else? It also reduces lung congestion. Oh, um, yes. hmm? So pulmonary okay. vasculature, it causes some amount of vasodilatation. 
So okay. risk of pulmonary edema comes down. So that will be the choice. Okay, you were telling about antibiotic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what antibiotic you will give? Which patients you will give the antibiotic? Uh, what antibiotic? Uh, yeah, ampicillin 2 grams uh, with the gentamicin 1.5 gram per kg we will give sir uh, it will be preferred in the patients uh, who are who have prosthetic valves uh, prior history of uh, infective endocarditis cardium uh, cardiac transplantation patients or any corrected uh, congenital heart disease or uh, untreated congenital heart disease corrected right. uh, heart disease with residual defects yes and what about vsd uh, in VSD, uh, we won't. Of course, uh, see, ASD is, uh, has a negligible risk. Held already. Yes. VSD has a low risk, uh, but yes. commonly we may end up giving in them also. Okay. This so is practically what we give. Otherwise, okay. what you told is the standard indication is okay. fine. Any patient with cyanotic heart disease, prosthetic uh, heart disease, uh -huh. prior, prior history of endocarditis. Fine. So these are the patients you must give. And uh, transplant patient is recommended, but I've never seen a one who has become pregnant. Fine. So these are the patients you must give. But uh, practically, most of the mitral stenosis also we end up giving one because of considering uh, uh, the sterility of the environment, we may give. So we okay. also commonly give MP and uh, Genta. In addition, AMP will be helpful as a GBS prophylaxis also. Okay, yes, sir. sir. Right? So most of the cardiac illness we end up giving. Okay, unless okay. it's just ASD or minimal trivial symptoms. Most of the cardiac lesion we practically still give. Of course, policy change has to happen, what is recommended, but difficult to conduct the RCT. Enough evidence in the books and by articles is there. Most of the cardiac disease does not require. Fine? Okay, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so she has progressed well, and then what you do? Uh, in second stage of labor, we will cut short the second stage sir, uh, by uh, out prophylactic outlet forceps, sir. Liberal episiotomy may be used, sir. Hmm. What do you mean by cutting short the second stage? Uh, Without the patient, uh, we will prevent maternal exhaustion, sir. As if the patient uh, strains and uh, wears down with difficulty, then uh, tachycardia may increase and the work on the heart will increase. Sir. So, uh, patient may go into cardiac failure. So, to prevent that, we can cut short the second stage by uh, prophylactic outlet forces. So. Yes, the classical teaching used to be like that. No, the moment patient reaches second stage, we cut down, but it's no longer valid. If somebody is progressing well, she may deliver as well. Okay, sir. Okay? Okay. Because classical teaching was like that, only cut short the second stage. And cutting short second stage means only the application of outlet forceps. Outlet it's not forceps. a difficult forceps, low forceps. You apply cause more yes, trauma. Sir. Yes, sir. That can become more messy. Yes, sir. Fine? Yes, sir. And uh, it is only the outlet forceps. Vacuum is not preferred because maternal... Effort, effort is required for vacuum. Required. So yes. it's the outlet forces. And that means station is already plus four. Yes, plus four, plus five, right? No, difficult to predict when she has gone in second stage, no? Because we are also doing TV less frequently. Yes, sir. Okay. So if you find the patient is bearing down for some time, yes, you don't want it to be prolonged. Any hmm. prolonged second stage, definitely no. If the patient is in class three or class four, yes, you will yeah. cut short. Cut short. But otherwise, a stable cardiac disease which is progressing well, we need not apply in every patient. Okay, yes, sir. Okay? And also now currently, this is second stage has two part. Passive second stage and active second stage. Right? Yes. So, this is active second stage is what need to be shorter. So, routinely every patient we need not give. Yes, we should definitely no prolonged second stage. Wearing down is wherever contraindicated, we should cut short. Patient is sick, we have to do. But otherwise, uh, routinely we need not do it. Earlier teaching, we used to tell, yes, every patient immediately. Every so, she delivered. What problems can be there right now? The next uh, uh, postpartum hours, hemorrhage sir. can occur, sir. Yes. And uh, postpartum hemorrhage, see, MS, if good uh, anemia, I mean, there is no anemia, hemoglobin yes. is good, may not be much trouble. Yes, Little yes, bit sir. blood loss. Excessive blood loss can, of course, uh, worsen the hemodynamic status. Some cardiac lesion, you have to be very careful. 
right? Where there yes. is a fixed output and output, output the output is on the preload itself. Yes. Some examples? Iotic stenosis. Yes. So there is small amount of blood loss also can cause side of cardiac arrest. Yes, right? Patients with pulmonary artery hypertension or with aortic stenosis, etc. So there we have to be very, very careful. Fine. Yes. MS yes. and all, it's okay. MR, AR, they are generally better tolerated. Tolerated in the brain. So in puperium, how do you monitor? Uh, you the episiotomy and then... Uh, yeah. uh, we should... Uh, uh, close monitoring is required for first 24 to 48 hours. Uh, yes, at least 24 hours. Yes, sir. Ideal will be 48 hours. Why? High chances of uh, failure during this time. Sir. Why? There is redistribution of... Uh, Cardiac output increase, sir. From the... To the systemic circulation. Yeah. So the uh, see normally also uh, in during pregnancy there is some amount of edema, extracellular fluid volume is more. So this all comes to intravascular compartment. So it can cause precipitate cardiac failure. What else can precipitate failure? Infections. Sir. Very good. So infections can be there in the your endometritis can be there or it can be yes. okay. Yes, so sepsis can be there. So that can precipitate. What else? Anemia, sir. Patient is already anemic. Already anemic, then she may deteriorate fine. What else? Um, hemorrhage, sir. If uh, she has yes, anemia, pain. hemorrhage, blood loss related cardiovascular changes can be there. Fine. What yes. else? Mm -hmm. Patient is lying down, resting completely. Ah, yes. What can happen? Vein. She's Balmary. exhausted. Yes. She's been told to be bed rest. We are also keeping her. Thromboembolism, sir. Thromboembolism. So this is a critical yes, period. So next next 48 hours at least, 24 to 48 hours, we have to yes. carefully monitor. And this patient may be discharged a little later. We should yes, prefer yes, to sir. keep them three to five days. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, Somebody sir. with hypertension, hypertension can be worsened during the third day, fourth day of the yes. postpartum. So that we have to keep in mind. Yes, so yes, suppose sir. first pregnancy she delivered. Yes, normal. yes sir. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, everything went well. So, what advice you give at this charge? Contraceptive advice. We should advise. You don't tell her contraception. You have to tell what what are the things you will advise. Uh, sir, we'll advise her uh, to restrict her activities, sir. She should uh, not uh, uh, do any strenuous work. She should continue all the cardiac medication, whatever. So medication to continue, restrict the activity. Yes. Yes, sir. She can what restrict. Is, what sir? about contraceptive advice? Contraceptive, sir. sir. Barrier contraceptions we can advise, okay. sir. Progesterone. Barrier looks the theoretically most uh, promising, but the least yes, practical failure because of the high failure rate. High failure rate, high failure rate yes, yes. sir. Progesterone only pills, implants, uh, injectables can be given, sir. Combined OCPs are contraindicated. IUCDs may also be given, but there is a risk but, of uh, uh, increased infection. Asthma. So we will explain her about okay. the increased risk of infection and expulsion. And uh, in fact, she, uh, POP again is not very practical for our patients. I mean, I'm telling from the rural background. Okay, so yes. copper tea is one of the most practical option, and that's what we follow. Okay, right. Sir. Yes, okay. So, copper tea you can give under uh, infective endocarditis uh, prophylaxis, cut the thread short, and okay. that may be the most practical method of doing contraception. Suppose she has two children, this was second baby. We can advise a vasectomy for the husband, husband. sir. If not, uh, the for the lady, we can advise a uh, tubal sterilization. Or, uh, if she is NIHA, um, NYHA class 3 of her, we can advise interval sterilization after six weeks. Right. So um, I'm happy that you brought that, that male should also participate in that. In fact, he's otherwise healthy. So it is equal responsibility. So yes, choice should be given. But unfortunately, the acceptability is very little, but we should tell them. And uh, tubectomy is yes, one of the options. And uh, if she's not stable, I mean, for surgery, right, then, then you can stabilize the medical conditions and then can be done either copper tea or uh, uh, permanent method like tubectomy. Okay. can be done yes. right so normally which mode of delivery is better for the cardiac illness Why? because a cardiac in cesarean section there will be a sudden redistribution of very fluid. good so the hemodynamic changes are much much rapid in a cesarean section you just open the abdomen take out the baby suddenly right yes sir yeah so always vaginal delivery is better 
Okay. Yes, sir. So there are some condition where cesarean section may be needed. Of course, these are very few. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Them, where you I, I, yourself advise the patient and will perform a cesarean section. Cesarean yes, section. Sir. Uh, it is a uh, coactation of iota or uh, any aortic di uh, aneurysm is there and uh, with a patient is on uh, anticoagulants or warfarin or something, uh, then uh, we will prefer C-section. So. Marfan syndrome with aortic root dilatation, primary pulmonary hypertension. Primary pulmonary hypertension, why? Oh, oh no, sir. Okay, so what you told is that, see, if the risk of acute maternal complication is there, like, for example, you rightly pointed that uh, if there is uh, aortic root dilatation, okay, yes. yes, and say, for example, aortic aneurysm is the risk of rupture, rupture of aneurysm, rupture of aneurysm. Yes. that can be rapidly fatal, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Somebody who has developed uh, acute congestive cardiac failure and not responding to the medical management. Yes, Next few hours, you you try not not responding. Pulmonary edema is worsening. So in that conditions, it helps in the management of the patient and resuscitation of the patient, right? Yes, and uh, warfarin, warfarin is mainly for the what indication? Uh, anti. If patient is uh, on anticoagulant, normally we stop at uh, term. Like, Thirty six weeks. weeks. Yeah. She is continued. Suppose, she suppose 36 weeks she went in labor. We didn't have time to switch over. And I switch over, over then we will do so. Yes, sir. For what indication are we doing section? The fetal intracranial yes. hemorrhage. The so baby is also receiving warfarin, so its its coagulation system is also not in order. So stress of labor can cause damage to the patient in the form of intra uh, cerebral yes, bleed in the baby. Yes, Fine. Sir. So for that reason, we take it out. And whenever you are doing a section in patient who is loaded with warfarin, you must give vitamin K. Vitamin K and FFP and, and cryo need to be yes, provided. Even. And under that supervision only, you need to do a section. Okay. Yes, sir. Another sometime we may do section if the cardiac output is fixed. Because pregnancy, yes, you know, during the Severe labor, aortic stenosis. So severe is aortic stenosis, which is symptomatic. Yes, sir. Even in the pregnancy, it is symptomatic. So she is manifesting, for example, recurrent anginal episodes, syncopal attacks are happening. So this patient cardiac output cannot increase. So this mm -hmm. other patient again will not tolerate labor. So you may do a cesarean section. Otherwise, mostly we restrict the cesarean section to obstetric reasons because hemodynamic yeah. changes are much better. Okay. Yes, okay. sir. And, uh, occasionally, we have done sections uh, if a concurrent another surgery is required. Yes. For example, same surgery, we have to uh, replace the mitral valve. Valve, mitral valve. So, yeah. Five, six cases like that only we have done recently. So, with good outcome. Fine. Yeah, so I think it is uh, six o'clock already. Yes, sir, it's already mm -hmm. time. So, we have two minutes left. Okay, fine. So, summarizing the cardiac. Uh, disease two minutes on order, then welcome problem. for you to put it. And uh, we have to look for the signs and symptoms. So we recognize progressive uh, dyspnea, uh, not able to lie down, uh, developing PND, okay? And uh, suppose hemoptysis is there, nocturnal cough is there, clinical examination, you find uh, JVP is raised, uh, okay? There is a loud murmur or any diastolic murmur is there, thrill is there, clubbing is there, sinuses, also this makes you suspect cardiac disease is there, right? We don't expect you to be exactly precise with auscultation that you can make out the cardiac lesion. Most of the time, cardiac patients will also have a lot of tachycardia. Yes, but if it is abnormal, at least we should detect that, right? And then it is a multidisciplinary approach where the team of cardiology is involved, anesthesia is involved, and of course, uh, obstetricians and well, these patients require more frequent follow up. We should prevent development of any anemia. Okay, hypertension, if anything is going to develop, that has to be frequently monitored. We yes. advise them to restrict their activity, take the drugs regularly, come for follow up, and depending on NYC class, they may be consulted to cardiologists. If the class one maybe once is in a pregnancy, but class deterioration happens, maybe then each trimester she may require cardiology visit. Three, four may require much frequent uh, opinions from cardiology, right? Yes. And uh, 
we saw the different time period and what are the reasons where patient can go in failure uh labor management is very important semi recumbent lateral tilt patient is monitored well and uh, minimize the number of pg abdominal examination you can do to monitor the progress of labor partogram can be there epidural analgesia will be analgesia of choice and in selected cases we do cut short the second stage that is by outlet forceps postpartum period we should not ignore because that is the area a lot of patients uh, deteriorate and then nobody pays attention and many of the deaths happen in the postpartum period contraception we should always advise just because pregnancy is uneventful everybody is happy she may go home and go in failure so continuing the proper drug restricting activity regular follow up we should be advising completed family means tubectomy or vasectomy can be advised fine and uh, practically maybe most of the time corporate is what we end up putting it because of the logistical reasons you have any doubts look dr jessy anything you want please add yes, sir after the delivery of the baby you can give the patient lasix before the placenta is delivered yes. yes. so so if the lesion is a stenotic lesion of mitral wall okay because uterine contraction has stopped so auto transfusion happens so usually 20 to 40 mg lasix we may give okay that is not should never be done for a aortic stenosis yes, patient yes sir fine so wherever the after load is critical sorry pre load is critical we should not give lasix and stenotic lesion of mitral wall this should be given anything from student or any other residents in the group can ask one or two question and then we wind up anybody can unmute and ask all right sir so thank you up. thank you somya and lavanya for a wonderful presentation thank you sir thank you yeah. sir thank you and, sir and uh, thank you dr jessy yeah. and uh, thank you dr sashikala and all the organizing team thank for you a wonderful dr. Dilip, sir uh, Thank, thank you, Dilip, sir, and thank you, Jessie. Rule of five. Rule of five. Uh, rule says someone is asking the question. Rule of five, sir. Uh, it is uh, uh, post delivery. Uh, five minutes. Uh, it is chances of pulmonary edema is high. Five hours. The risk of uh, cardiac failure is high. Five days. The risk of infective endocarditis is high. And uh, five weeks, there is a risk of thromboembolism, and five months, peripartal cardiomyopathy risk is high. Yes, I mean it's a, I think a very innovative or mnemonic kind of thing to whatever we discuss. Uh, yeah, you remember them. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you Dilip sir. Thank yeah. you, Jesse, ma'am, for the wholesome and wonderful discussion. Thank and uh, the presenters also did very well. All the best for your exams.